Hey folks, I'm Dumotro, and this is the classic Fibonacci sequence, which starts with a zero, then a one, then each following Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two, like one plus one is two, one plus two is three, and etc. And these will quickly grow to multi-digit numbers with all sorts of appearances. But if we jump ahead in the sequence a little bit, say to the 60th Fibonacci number, an interesting pattern emerges. I've highlighted the last digit of these Fibonacci numbers from the 60th up through 66th here, red, because they look very similar to the way the Fibonacci sequence itself began. 0112358, 0112358, before it sort of overflows and the last digit didn't have enough room to contain that whole number. But if we jump ahead even further, say to the 300th Fibonacci number, where I've just written the last four digits of these Fibonacci numbers from the 300th through 312th there, now it seems that the last two digits are in on this pattern. 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89. The same as those Fibonacci numbers before it's almost like 144, but overflows in a way. The last two digits couldn't contain that one. And if you see this, you might wonder a few things, like, is there a point in the Fibonacci sequence where there are three digits repeating, giving us room for more Fibonacci numbers to come back? And is this just a quirk of our base 10 way of writing numbers? Or what would happen in other bases? Let's start by seeing if the Fibonacci sequence has a pattern in terms of even and odd numbers. It begins with an even zero and then an odd one. And even without knowing these further numbers, we can note that an even number plus an odd number always generates an odd number. And then the next term, which is determined by adding these two, is an odd plus an odd, which is always an even. Then an odd plus an even is always an odd. And hey, look, we're sort of back where we started because this next one will be determined purely from even plus odd, just like that previous term had been determined by an even plus odd. And we can note that this part will loop as soon as we get back to a two in a row that was at the beginning there. And if we write this in mod two language, just writing the remainder a number would have if we divided by two, where evens get a zero and odds get a one, which is also the last digit these numbers would have if written in binary, the Fibonacci sequence will loop zero, one, one, zero, one, one forever. So what about other mods or bases? Like how about mod 12? To see what patterns the last digit of the Fibonacci sequence might have in base 12, we can use clocks as an example. A 12 hour clock like this, and we would turn the 12s to zeros and the 10s and 11s to single digit symbols if we were actually in base 12. And if we imagined going to an hour that was lined up with a particular Fibonacci number, like if my Fibonacci number was 13, I would end up on the number one if I went that many hours from the top. Well, looking at which hours would correspond to which Fibonacci numbers, I would end up being at 12, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. The first few are pretty predictable. And then I would go to that 13, then around to 21, which would end up sending me to there, and so on. And eventually, I would hit a certain cycle where I was back to the pattern I had done before. 
here is the numbers that I would hit as hours playing that game. And after 24, I would return to a Fibonacci number being at 12, one being at one, and another one being at one, a Fibonacci number being on the hour two, and so on. This tells us that in base 12, every 24 Fibonacci numbers, the last digit repeats in a cycle. We can also notice that the hour number six isn't anywhere in that cycle, meaning that no Fibonacci numbers ever will end in the digit six if written in base 12, which also tells us that any Fibonacci number that's both threeven and even must be at least doubly even. So if clocks can tell us things about base 12, or we could have gone for 24 or 60 using minutes or other interpretations of hours, why don't we look at another common cycle in humanity that is weekdays, where every seventh day you're back on the same weekday name, like Sunday or Monday. Well, if I called a certain one of these days zero, for example, Sunday, and then I went to the weekday that each Fibonacci number could be associated with, like if I had the Fibonacci number eight, eight days after zero would send it to a Monday, I would have a cycle there as well. I would land on the zeroth day I picked, like Sunday here, and Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, and etc. And every 16 Fibonacci numbers, I would be back to the same pattern of weekdays that I started on, which tells us that in base seven, every 16 Fibonacci numbers repeat their last digit in a cycle. So we can already see that seven and 12, as far as bases, are even neater with this pattern of last digits than base 10, where the last digits loop every 60 Fibonacci numbers, which is why I used that example. But we didn't just see the last digit here. We also made the last two digits do that. So let's jump into that. What does it take for the last two digits of a number in base 10 to repeat? Well, the last two digits cycle back around if you were just counting up them after 99 back to 00. zero. And every 100 numbers, the last two digits, if you were just counting up a number line, would loop back around. So just like the last digit of something in base 10 could be visualized like a 10 hour clock, the last two digits could be visualized like a 100 hour clock, like we were in what could be called mod 100. And if we look at how the Fibonacci sequence acts in mod 100, or if we were in base 100, then these would all be smushed to smaller numbers and it would just be the last digit with 100 options cycling. Then it seems that at 300, we began hitting the same things. And it's true that in mod 100, every 300 Fibonacci numbers, we will repeat the same result. Meaning that every 300 Fibonacci numbers in base 10, we get two digits repeating in a cycle. Now, before we go further in the base 10 representations of Fibonacci numbers to see if there's a point where the last three digits repeat, let's ask a question, which is, for a given base and a given amount of last digits, will there always be a cycle or loop of some point that it falls into? Well, let's look at the last digit of a Fibonacci number in base B and note that 
The Fibonacci number is purely determined by the sum of the last two, and that the last digit will be purely determined by the last digits of the last two adding up, because all the further places in these numbers are too big of spots to affect that one's place. And so there's a finite amount of combinations of two final last digits. In fact, that one has B options in base B, and so does that, leaving us with B times B or B squared, total possible combinations of two last digits in a row. And once those create the next last digit, that with the second of those will create a new, and keep going with the exact same pattern we've seen before, since each new ones place will be purely determined by the ones places of the last two numbers, and there's a finite amount of combinations of those. Even if we wondered about the last two digits in a base B, well now there are b squared amount of options for each of those for example in base 10 to look at all the possible last two digit strings from 0 to 99 there's 100 10 squared amount of possibilities and so the total amount of possibilities of two strings in a row would be b squared times b squared or b to the fourth power amount of two in a rows of last two digits in a base B that would be the only parts that could affect the new last two digits of the next number. And so at the most, and as we'll see, mathematicians have proven that the cycles aren't as big as these at the most I'm going to show, but at the most, the last digit of a number in base B must follow B times B amount of possible options and must cycle after at most B squared Fibonacci numbers. The last two places are built off of B squared times B squared amount of options, making them cycle at at most b to the fourth power amount of Fibonacci numbers, and for three digits, there would still be a finite amount of three-digit ends there and three-digit ends there, thus a finite amount of combinations of the last two three-digit ends that leave us forced into some sort of cycle for any amount of last digits in any base. Here are the cycles that the Fibonacci sequence loops in in different mods, and these are also the cycles of last digits that would repeat if we looked at the Fibonacci sequence in that given base. And up in mod 10, or the last digit of base 10, we saw that the cycle was 60 in length, and that we could also find a cycle of the last two digits that was 300 in length. That's because the mod 100 cycle is 300 numbers before it repeats, and that could tell us about the last digit in some fictional base 100 that had digit symbols for everything from 0 to 99. But since 100 is 10 squared, it can also tell us about two places worth in base 10. Similarly, if we looked at the cycle in mod 1000, which is 10 cubed, that would be a cycle 1500 numbers in length, and then it would loop back around through those numbers, which could tell us about the last digit in some base 1000, or the last three digits in base 10. And we can continue looking at mod 10,000's pattern, which is 15,000, looking kind of similar. And in fact, to find mod 100,000, which would give us five digits worth in base 10, that's 150,000. And it's even been proven that beyond this point, all further 
periods for powers of 10, which will tell us about further amounts of digits in base 10, just add a zero to how long the cycle is. The next one will be 1,500,000. If you look at the cycles and how many numbers are in them for different mods, other patterns emerge also. Like after mod two, all further mods will have an even amount of numbers in their cycle. And here are some other traits that mathematicians have proven about these cycles. In general, it's pretty cool that you can take a sequence that spirals larger and larger and interpret it in these clock-like mods Mods to find cycles within it that tell you information about how it would look in a variety of different bases. And the Fibonacci sequence isn't the only type of numbers we could play these games with. In another episode before long, we'll look at what happens when we take triangular numbers and interpret those in different mods. Like, do those have cycles of their own? All right, folks, thanks for joining me today to learn about some clock-like pa- Oh, uh, okay. Whoa, okay, uh, Carlo, water. Also, make sure you're tuned into my Demotro channel where I post a bunch of live streams and bonus videos and stuff. And special thanks to my Patreon supporters who help make this show possible. I'll see you guys in the next episode, and I hope you have a great day.